Welcome to Focus on Community Policing. I'm Elaine Bays, and with me is Officer Eric Hubble. Welcome. Welcome. Eric, we're here at the uh, Regional Center for Animal Control and Protection, and specifically what I'd like to talk to you today is about animal control issues. Um, we've been hearing a whole lot in the news lately about rabies, and I was wondering if you could start off by telling us, um, are there particular signs for rabies, and if somebody suspects an animal has rabies, what should they do? There's no real specific sign for rabies. Um, rabies affects the animal's central nervous system, uh, and it can go through different stages. Um, it actually calls, ends up causing paralysis and death in the animal. Um, if somebody suspects an animal is sick, um, be it rabies, uh, canine distemper, whatever the case may be, they need to stay away from it. Um, contact either us or Game and Inland Fisheries or the health department and just try to keep an eye on it until somebody can get out there and take care of the situation. Okay. Um, first thing we'll need to know when we get there though is there been some type of exposure, be it to a person or companion animal. Right, and that's gonna lead me to a question about vaccines and licenses. Um, what are pet owners supposed to have? They are required by law in the county to have rabies vaccinations on their cats and dogs and they are required to have purchase every year or every three years, depending on their rabies vaccine, run a county tax. The dogs okay. have to wear the tags, the cats do not, but they are required to purchase them, be it indoor or outdoor animals. Okay, and and how many um, cats and dogs can a citizen own in the county of Roanoke? In the county, they can own three dogs and up to six cats, as long as wow. four of the cats have been spayed or neutered. Now, I'm sure there's some rules concerning pets um, roaming free, especially dogs. Could you share what that would be? Dogs are allowed to be loose as long as they stay on the owner's property. Once they leave that property, they're considered to be at large. Um, they have to be under some type of control of the owner, either verbal, electronic, or on a leash. Okay. Um, cats are allowed to roam free until they start to create a nuisance for somebody. Um, and that's generally where we get the calls on the cats once they start creating nuisance issues. And, and what typically happens if you get a call about a free roaming animal? What, what do you have to do? Um, dogs, we go out, attempt to locate it. If we can locate it, we have to attempt to, you know, if possible, to locate the owner to return the animal. If not, then we bring the animal down here to the regional center. Okay. Um, cats, we first try to identify if the person who's calling in about the cat knows who the owner is. Um, if they do, then we make recommendations that direction um, as far as speaking with the owner or us going out speaking with them. If they don't, then we offer them a cat trap, which is a live catch trap, um, no stress on the animal, right. and we're able to pick the animal up, bring it down here to see if we can identify the owner. And about how many calls per month do, do, you, do you get for animal issues? We're averaging uh, between 200 to 300 calls per month for a, a five-man unit. And, and, and just to clarify, um, you are a police officer who has the ability to write tickets and, and, and this is one thing, one area that you train in, animal control, is that correct? Correct, We're, the five of us are certified police officers with, special train, with specialized training in animal control okay. and um, we do enforce both sides, right. the animal and uh, any other issues okay. that may arise. I think, I think sometimes people have the misconception that, that you just handle this one area, but you handle all areas. Yes, ma'am. Um, can you talk to me or tell us about some of the tools that you use if you have to, uh, to, to catch a, an animal? Uh, we've got numerous different tools um, from nets to stretchers to catch poles for aggressive dogs. Um, little flimsy things called snappy snares when you got a dog that you just can't yeah. get real <laughs> close to you can have you, have you ever had some real aggressive animals that you've had to uh, uh try to yeah and they can <laughs> you get some rather large get a large dog on there and it's not real happy then you're gonna have a time and sounds kind of intimidating <laughs> and it's, let you handle that one <laughs> what what about um Officer Hubble, what, what about wildlife issues? What if somebody is having an issue with like a, a, a black bear or a deer or something of that? Wh whom should they call for that? We get quite a few calls, especially this time of year, on bears, um, raiding bird feeders and that type of thing. Okay. Um, and in conjunction with us, you know, the game Department of Game and Inland Fisheries monitor, or takes care of all the wildlife. Okay. They. Uh, 
that's who would generally be contacted. Um, but being, you know, Roanoke County is pretty much quite a few, quite a bit of the county is in the woods. You know, that's you're pretty much in their territory unless they're posing some immediate threat to right, unless they're know, doing some type of damage. Or, yeah, property or life. Now, if, if someone um, has a question or, or has an animal control issue, who, who can they contact if they need help? They can contact the police department, um, either our office, which is 777-8606, or the main dispatch center at 562-3265. Okay. Well, thank you so much for that info. Not a problem. And we'll see you next time for Focus on Community Policing.